It's just Uncle Larry with the new chair. You still got a new chair? It's got some blue on it. We went to uh, Staples Office Center the other day, me and the boys, and we were just trying to ship a package, and I couldn't help but notice these new chairs they have, and they're quite comfy. But just home from another long day of sessioneering. Uh, cheers to you guys. If you've cracked your late night beer, hope everybody's doing great out there. Mm. First beer of the day. Uh, had a blast again today. Uh, thanks for all the kind words about the video I put up of Sweet Gwen. She's a, she's a gem. I was going to talk to you guys about some guitar stuff. Because I'm not ready to go to bed yet. I thought I was. But I think I'm going to stay up for a minute. the other night on the way home from work, me and Gordon. I, I drive Gordon to uh, the sessions, drive him home at night, and we talk about music, as you can imagine. We listen to Keep Forgetting by Mike McDonald. Man, what a funky-ass track. Um, I didn't realize that was Lukather playing on that. Uh, there's two tracks of guitar that are really funky, and uh, there's one with a real heavily processed, uh, like sort of uh, digital signal processing on it, and then there's another track where he plays these Funky ass. Like, he's all like. It's really great. I, could, I just got off subject there for a minute, but just wanted to say uh, thanks for all those who watched and, uh, you know, all the kind comments. Gwen really is that sweet of a person. What you saw today in that video is not an act. She is 
Such a cool person. My God. We had so much fun. We've, we've tracked eight songs in two days. And I was going to talk to you about some guitar stuff. See, I'm 55 years old, and I'm still learning every time I do a session. Um, it's amazing. Uh, you think you know stuff, and then you, you, you learn more and more as you keep going. See, like, a lot of times when you're, in, you're doing a session, you'll be playing electric, and you'll be out of view of the producer. The producer's at the console, and they may not be able to see what guitar you're playing or, or what you're playing through, right? So they're really just judging strictly on what they hear, which is what I prefer, to be honest. And uh, I always pay attention to what producers notice. Like, I've always done this. Like, I'll pull out a guitar, I'll start playing it, and if I don't hear any feedback, if no one's like, dude, that's a sick sound, like, I'll try something else. You're always reading the room, and you're always, like, sort of fishing for, like, Someone to go, dude, that's it, you know? And uh, I only brought five guitars to the session. Okay, for two days of tracking, eight songs, I brought a Princeton Reverb, which I used on every song. Turned up to three. Um, two mics on it, an old Sony C37 and a 57, and it sounded amazing. I mean, um, I was covering tons of, you'll hear the record when it comes out, covering so much ground. And it was all through that little pitiful amp and uh, uh, I brought my white sin strat I brought my burst I brought this old ja Jaguar I brought 57 special 58 Les Paul special I'll show you in a minute and I brought uh, uh, what else did I bring uh, oh a 60 6335 okay played them all equally they all got a lot of uh, play time but the guitar that producer Scott Hendricks kept noticing was this. Every time I would pull this thing up, he was like, dude, I love that sound. So, you know, a Jaguar, do you realize that the Fender Jaguar was Fender's top of the line guitar when it came out? In, in 1964, if you look at the Fender catalog, the Jaguar was more expensive than the Jazzmaster, than the Stratocaster, than the Telecaster. It was their top-of-the-line instrument. And uh, I've owned a bunch of these over the years. I've owned a bunch of Jazz Masters. People put these in the same drawer as Jazz Masters, even though the pickups are totally different. There is very few similarities, in the fact, aside from the fact that the bodies are both offset. So what I've noticed over the years is I bought hundreds of Jazz Masters. Uh, I've always considered the Jazz Master to be a superior guitar than a Jaguar. But I've changed my mind on that. Um, this is this pickup sound is more usable to me in the studio than a Jazzmaster by a mile. What I mean by that is like both of these guitars, the Jazzmaster and the Jaguar, have very distinctive sounds that you cannot get out of any other instrument. Nothing sounds like a Jazzmaster, and nothing sounds like a Jaguar two totally different worlds, but they are very different. Although, when you when you sit and play a jazz master in a room, and you flip to that middle position where, where it's home canceling and everybody loves it, it's an awesome sound. It's the ultimate in twang, the ultimate in sort of Western... It's unbeatable. You know, you guys have heard it. It's, you know, the, the, the low, clean notes you get out of those are very baritone-ish and... I don't particularly love the way jazz masters distort, to be honest, but they have an awesome clean sound, in my opinion. Um, but I've noticed over the years that jazz masters are harder to fit into a track when you're working with a fucking golden ear producer than than you would think they would be. Like I, I I've been on plenty of sessions where I'm I play an old jazz master and I try to do. You know, one of these sort of like, you know, like one of these kind of vibes, you know. Or like. And everyone's like, that's a, that's a really cool sound, but it's getting canceled by the bass. Or it doesn't quite, I have to turn it up too loud to hear it. I've noticed that with a lot of jazz masters. A Jaguar fits into the track easier, in my opinion, than a Jazzmaster. Um, 
I was doing a couple, like some of the songs we were working on, like the, the, the general vibe was like, you know, real pop. Whereas, you know, almost like, you know, up tempo, sort of alt, you know, punky sort of vibes. And man, if I would do stuff like our rank a chord, like. Like, producers is like, I love that sound. It's perfect. It's very grudgy in a, in a cool way. I couldn't pull that off with a jazz master, although they're in the same world. The, ja the Jaguar is more usable, in my humble opinion. Another guitar that, that he was loving, uh, every, time I put, I, every time I put it on and played it, he was like, dude, that tone is unbelievable. It was the, the, the special, but I was using the middle sound, both pickups, and when you do that, it's an amazing sound. We all know how boinky and cool, almost Stratocaster vibe that is when you gas both pickups all the way up on a special and you play big American, you know, chords. Uh, you have to add some high end, you know, artificially. Like I'll, I'll use, just I'll like I'll take my like light speed pedal and turn the treble way up to give it a little bit of presence, you know? But like, let's just say, for example, like this is a rough sound without the added high end, you know. Like that shit really sounds cool in a track, right? It's like boinky and alive and very rock, but it's not too butt rock and it's not too John Cougar, not that that's a bad thing, uh, but like some, it's it, it's more modern, right, than, than that. It's not too, like, you know, these sounds evoke emotions and like, in like, uh, I'm a huge John Cougar fan. I'm not dogging John Cougar fan, I love those records, but I'm saying if you if you want something to be a little more on the modern tip, these, these uh, two P90s in the middle, is a very modern sound in a very cool way, you know. You know, pickup design and the guitar design in the 50s is very modern sounding when you use it like that. So, you know, it's funny, you, you notice what people, and, and like I used the burst on a bunch of solos and Gwen loved that. She loved the sound of that guitar and, and the producer loved it. And, uh, but these quirky sounds are sometimes more usable than an amazing sounding 335 or a burst. Like these sort of, um, you know, a little more personality in these types of sounds, you know? This is for the session players out there. I'm not talking about, you know, the bar band guys. You can't really get away with that when you're, I'm saying when you're, when you're making records, you know, cause like you try to get away with these kind of sounds like on a bar gig and it's just that, it needs to be very subtle that where you can really fuck with the EQ. The best shit on a bar band gig is just a Les Paul turned up with a bridge pickup, you know, where you can really hear it. That's what really gets you heard in a bar, you know. And that's good too when you need it. But this would be too flabby and too much low end to get away with on a bar gig, you know. <laughs> So the, the P90 middle sound is wonderful. It's a, it's a really great sound, but you do have to add a little treble when you want it to really speak in the track. And, uh, and I'm gonna say one more thing and I'm gonna hang up because it's getting too long. Um, I've, you guys know what a fan I am of the old Gretsch guitars. Um, I've got a couple of great old Gretsches that I love. And the, the go-to sound for an old Gretsch is like that sort of, high lonesome sound. Beautiful, I 
awesome sound. Here's the thing though. I'll be sitting on a session and I'll be going for that sound and I'll have the you know, Gretsch sitting there and I'll go to do that with the, with the Gretsch. And if I just put that guitar down and I'll pick up an old 335 and I'll do the same thing on a 335, a little bit of mid-range boost from the EQ with a clean sound, it sounds more Gretschy than a Gretsch and you get pure notes and more sustain. That's the thing about Gretsch's that fucks you in the studio. You get no sustain. So like you want these low notes to sustain, you know, when you're doing that thing. it sounds so gretchy that you, you don't even want to play that gretch. So I'm more interested in gretches now these days, instead for not for the high lonesome sound, but for the jangle. You know, when you get a great, you know, or you got these sounds like, when you're doing a track like that, you want the jangle and the high notes, the gretch will give you that with a little bit of mild distortion, you know? So, just little things that I'm picking up on that probably a lot of you guys don't give a shit about because you're not doing records every day. But for anybody out there that is recording, think about that. Get you get you a Jaguar. Start using the middle sound on a, on a P90 guitar more. And sometimes when you're about to use a Gretsch, try an old 335 instead and see if it gives you better results. Okay, I'll shut up now. Thanks for watching.